Hi guys, this is Travis from Scroll Saw Goodies. Welcome back to another episode. We're continuing on our classroom series as we learn to use the program Inkscape to create scroll saw patterns. This is going to be our lesson number eight, which is our final lesson in the entire series. Uh, we're going to be putting everything we have learned up to this point. Uh, we're going to kind of combine them together and come up with a scroll saw pattern. Uh, this time we're going to be making a uh, miniature wooden clock or a, a desk clock. Uh, this will be using a 1 and 7 16 inch clock insert. It's a pretty common size for a clock insert and uh, you can find them from various sources on the internet as well as some craft stores will also carry them. Um, let's just go ahead and jump on in and uh, go ahead and get started. Okay the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to file document properties and choose US letter and that way I know that anything that is placed on this piece of paper will be printed correctly on my home printer uh, and let's go ahead and start designing now the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a uh, a clock template uh, that way uh, I could go ahead and just create the holder for the actual clock itself and then I'll add it to the design a little bit later. So let's go ahead and uh, create a circle. We'll just uh, create a simple circle like this. Uh, looks like the uh, lines are dashed, so I'm going to come over here to stroke. I'm going to click it once. I'm going to come over to stroke style, and under the dashes pull down, I'm going to select a solid line at the top there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. Let's go ahead and close the fill and stroke dialog box. Up here is our width and our height. It's in pixels. Let's push it over into inches. And what I want this to be is uh, exactly uh, one and um, one and three eighths is uh, the magic number that I need. Uh, this is going to be the actual hole that uh, you need to drill out to actually put the uh, clock insert into. So we need to make that one and three eighths. But Let's go ahead and do a little bit of math here. Uh, we could do one just as easy, but what is three eighths? So let's use our little calculator. Uh, we'll take three divided by eight, and it's three point or point three seven five. So I'm gonna click up here. Let's lock the aspect ratio. So I'm gonna type in one point three seven five. Hit return, and now that is. 1 and 3 eighths exactly. Okay, so since most of us are going to be uh, using a drill drill press, a uh, 1 and 3 eighths inch drill bit, uh, let's go ahead and uh, create a little crosshairs here uh, just for the center point. So I'm going to come over here to my Bezier tool. I'm just going to draw a straight line. Hold down my control key just to constrain the uh, uh, along the X or Y axis. I'm going to hit return just to get a simple line. I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and now I can select both of these go to my align and distribute center and center and then group this and now I have a uh, the hole with the center point already marked. Now we need a little bit of border around the edge here so let's go ahead and create that um, so let's go ahead and create, oh, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch hole, maybe. So let's go ahead and create a little square. I'm just going to use this as a as a uh, little guide here. And I'm going to go ahead and select both of these. Come over here to uh, last selected, and then go ahead and let's go ahead and stack those. Okay, so now I'm going to ungroup this. I'm going to select the circle. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to come up here to Path, Dynamic Offset. And I'm just going to move it to the top of that. So something like that looks nice. Okay, let's go ahead and fill this in with gray. Send that down to the bottom. And then we're going to select both of these. I'm going to come up here to Path difference and now we have our hole with our center point the center points just floating there so we're gonna group everything up 
and now we have our little holder for our clock. So I'm just going to set that to the side. We'll come back to that a little bit later. Okay, let's go ahead and create a frame for our design. Uh, I think I'm going to do a nice little elk scene. Uh, so I'm going to create a nice little frame around it. Uh, let's go ahead and use the oval button here. Uh, I want a nice oval, I think. Um, for height, uh, I have some uh, one by six stocks, so let's just make it, oh, I don't know, 5.25 tall. And let's make it uh, seven inches. That's nice. That's a nice round number. And we could do that as well. Uh, let's go ahead and create a quarter inch square again, uh, just for, oh, let's make it a half inch square. Let's make it a half inch on each side. And I'm going to select both of these. Now this little square is nothing more than a measure. So I'm going to go ahead and shove it to the top by using the align and distribute. And then I'm going to come in here, zoom in a bit. I'm going to duplicate this bottom one and I'm going to do a dynamic offset again. And just kind of shrink it down and just bring it down to that bottom there. It doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere in the ballpark would be nice. So now we have a half inch border all around. So let's go ahead and select both of those. Path, difference, and now we have a uh, nice little frame there. Uh, let's go ahead and put a couple of legs in there. So let's go ahead and we'll create a little square. Let's pull down a um, let's pull down a little guideline first. I'm just going to put that at the bottom just just for a little bit of reference. And I think I'm going to try to put a nice little leg in here, some like, something like that. So I'm going to come up here to object to path. That way I can control uh, the nodes. And let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and delete this. Uh, let's see here. And we'll just kind of create a shape that that looks nice. Let's move this over this way a little bit. And let's add a node here. In fact, this node's got to come down a little bit because we don't want it to go past that edge there. And we're just trying to create a nice little pattern. Let's see here. Oh, see now now we're getting somewhere. Something like that's kind of nice. And let's pull this thing up so that it's straight. And let's pull this out. See, I like that a lot. Let's go ahead and add a uh, node here. And I'm not too concerned about these lines in here very much, just because it's going to be um, uh, going to be welded to your main design here. So it's not too much of a concern. Let's go ahead and pull this thing up, and let's raise this up just a little bit. I think something like that looks all right. So let's go ahead and duplicate that. Uh, we'll flip it along the uh, horizontal axis and we'll just kind of rough it in. Just somewhere in there, so, uh, something like that. We'll select both of these and we'll go ahead and uh, center these like that. And then we'll group that and then we'll center both of these along this center. And then I'm going to pull this thing down so that this goes below the this little guideline just a little bit because we want a little flat little area right there. And I think that'll look real nice. And then uh, let's go ahead and select this and make sure that none of this is poking into the frame. Why isn't that? Let's go ahead and get rid of this. 
guideline. There we go. Okay. So I think we got something good there. Let's go ahead and ungroup this. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll leave that up because we'll be needing it. And let's go ahead and select two of these objects. Come up here to path union. And this one as well, path union. And let's go ahead and grab a box. And this is just going to be a cutter because I want to flatten that bottom a little bit. So I'm going to nudge this up just a tish. Select both of these path difference. And what that did is it flattened that bottom and then uh, I also flattened these edges. So now that we have a nice straight edge. And let's go ahead and double check this just to make sure everything's working all right. Uh, it's about five inches tall. We could go ahead and group that again and let's, or uh, constrain the aspect ratio. And we could go ahead and knock it up uh, to, um, oh, what were we thinking about? Five and a quarter, just to give us some nice space to work with. So now we have our basic frame right there. Uh, and let's do one more easy thing. Let's go ahead and create the base. Uh, if you remember right, this base is about eight and a quarter wide. Let's go ahead and make this base nine inches wide. We'll go ahead and select that. We'll type in nine inches wide. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cut this out of uh, three quarter inch stocks. So, um, oh, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch on each side would probably be all right. So let's go 1.5, oh, not 15. We don't want 15, we want 1.5. There we go. And let's go ahead and round these corners a bit. So I'm going to select my square tool again and just go ahead and round those corners a little bit. And that'll be the base. Okay. Something real simple like that. In fact, let's go ahead and make this 9.5 wide. I think something like that will look a little bit better. Okay, so we got our frame, we got our base, and we also have our little um, uh, clock insert. Let's go ahead and find that elk that we need. Uh, I went over to Flickr, and I found this uh, real nice picture of this elk. Uh, it was done by uh, KQ Ed Quests. Uh, that's his album. And uh, I just did a uh, advanced search and I looked for any uh, elk pictures that came up as Creative Commons and I came down here to additional information and uh, you can see that uh, uh, you could use it if you attribute to where you got the original image and it's also non-commercial. So since uh, that fits both of our uh, requirements, I thought this was a real nice picture so I thought I'd use it. So I'm going to click up here to all sizes and I see my full size image right there. I'm going to just right click, I'm going to copy the image, paste that image, control V, and now I have my image in here. And I'm going to go ahead and trace that elk. So I'm going to grab my uh, square and I want an exact square. So I'm going to square up those corners. I want to remove the fill and I want to make the outline red. And that just makes it easier to read. So really now, all we got to do is come in here. Oh, we got to come up here to path, path to object. That way we could start editing the nodes. And now let's go ahead and start tracing our elk. So let's, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. I'm going to start right here, I think. And then we'll just start uh, adding our nodes. And this is going to take a little while, but uh, you know what? I'll just kind of rough it in as fast as I can. We don't need it extremely detailed, you know. It's uh, going to be more or less silhouette anyway. But uh, we'd like to kind of get in the ballpark somewhere. Uh, let's put one right there. But we just want a real basic design. And this is really something you're going to have to kind of learn to do to be able to trace because there's going to be pictures where you want a nice silhouette. Yeah, let's go in there. And this is a uh, very 
very good tool to learn to use because you'll be able to do a lot with it. Once you learn how to trace objects, uh, you'll be able to uh, do quite a bit. So I'm going to put a little S curve in there. And I'm going to select this one because you kind of see it kind of comes in here a little bit funky. I'm going to come up here to smooth that out so that it's just a little bit more smooth. Okay, so... Now we don't have to de uh, do every single detail and every single curve. Uh, mostly just because I know exactly how much uh, detail well, uh, detail I could cut and really uh, how big this is going to be in the end anyway. I'm going to go ahead and smooth that note out. Uh, so I don't need to get too carried away with the detail. So uh, just you kind of get a feel for it. We'll put in a node right there. We'll put a little S curve. This round, this back of this knee here is a little rounded, so we'll do that. Okay. Uh, looks like I mis must have misread that. Okay, I screwed this one up, so let's go ahead and make it into a straight line again. We'll put this here. Make that an S curve. Yeah, that's good enough, I think. Got his, oops, got his tail over here. I don't know why that's a straight line. Let's go ahead and make that a straight line. We'll make this a straight line as well. So I'm going to just kind of pull this in a little bit. This is kind of his tail area. Okay, let's grab this node and move it over. So there's a lot of... Uh, Let's go ahead and close this just so we have more screen real estate. So this part is a little boring probably to watch, but uh, I think you'll still be able to pick up a thing or two. Okay, let's pull that in. Let's move this node out of the way just so these things don't get too confusing. And let's add another node over here because it looks like things are going to get a little crazy over here. So let's just add some nodes. Okay, so. Oh, that looks alright. Okay, things are really starting to come together now. Let's pull that up a little bit. And there's going to be some liberties you're going to end up having to take just because uh, you know exactly how big it is. Uh, like some of these antlers, you know, you might not be able to get the kind of detail you want. Some of these are going to be real fragile, so you're going to have to take a little bit of liberty and uh, thicken some areas up if you need to. Uh, the best way to do this is uh, after you have the design or the pattern designed, uh, go ahead and print these out. I, whenever I design a pattern, I usually like to print out my pattern first and then um, That was acting a little goofy. I like to print out my pattern and go over it with a uh, with a uh, red pen. I'm going to thicken this one up because I just I don't think we could cut that that thin. But I go over it with a red pen, looking for problem areas, and just circle them. And then uh, I could go back to my original design 
and then um, and then go ahead and fix those areas that I have I'm having trouble with. And again, I'm going to go ahead and thicken this one up just a tish bit as well, and then. We got a little bit of crazy shapes in here. I'm not going to get too carried away with the detail there. But I will thicken that area up. There we go. And it's just a matter of playing with these nodes. And this podcast might actually run a little bit long. We're at 20 minutes right now. And I know the majority of the time we've been just kind of watching me trace these things. But I have a feeling you'll find watching the entire process. More people want to see the entire process. Uh, if you're not one of those people, I just... I'll just go ahead and fast forward until we're done. But we're almost done. Let's go ahead and move this down. Let's just go ahead and delete that node. Yeah, we're almost done here. See, I like this elk picture because it's really hard to find pictures of an elk bugling. And I really like that. But Flickr is a good place to find reference photos. Uh, just make sure you read, um, find out what their, um, what the usage rights are. Uh, each one of them is different. So just make sure, uh, that's why I like using the advanced search because it gives you options to just search in stuff that is within Creative Commons license and you could also select uh, only pictures that can be used commercially um, or just select uh, items that uh, have uh, some of your basic or creative commons um, uh, licensing terms so that's one of my favorite places to look I also like looking at wiki commons so if you look anything up in Wiki, Wikipedia, uh, a lot of times you'll find a link on the bottom that uh, gives you uh, more resources of images. Uh, and you can kind of go in there and look uh, for some nice images as well. Let's go ahead and shallow these things up a little bit. Okay, so we got our basic outline. Let's go ahead and cut out the center here. So I'm going to go ahead and again create a new square path, object to path. Let's go ahead and move that in. And then we're going to go ahead and start working on this inner part, which would be subtractive. Because right now all we have is a silhouette. But anyway, I was saying uh, Wiki Commons uh, has a lot of nice pictures. And you're going to have to look at the licensing terms on those as well. But uh, the nice thing about Wiki Commons is that it actually tells you, or not Wiki Commons, yeah, Wiki Commons. Uh, the nice thing about Wiki Commons is that it will tell you uh, exactly what the licensing terms are. So it's not like you have to do any extra research or anything like that, which is uh, very, very handy in my opinion. Okay, so now that we have this area cut out, we also have the outline. Uh, let's go ahead and add a couple of details. I'm going to use my Bezier tool. I'm going to extend this uh, shoulder up. Let's go ahead and make that red just so it's easier to see. And we'll just kind of zoom in here. And then we'll just do a little bit of veining right here uh, just to give it a little bit of extra detail. 
and let's go ahead and add a touch of veining here. Make that red as well, just so it's easy to see. Uh, just just a little bit of a cut there. Let's go ahead and uh, extend this uh, this back leg here. Make that red as set stroke. You know that more or less is ready anyway. Let's just add just a tish bit of a curve. Doesn't really need much. And then uh, let's go ahead and uh, bring in a little bit of the coat. Uh, we'll just do a little bit from here. Set the stroke to that. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more. In fact, something just simple as that might be all I need. So let's go ahead and select these. If we combine them, we could select both of these nodes. join them. Okay. And let's go ahead and add the eye. And we might do something with a snout as well. So let's let's just do the eye first. Let's go ahead and create a little line, uh, red stroke, and then we'll just kind of bring it up like this. And then what we're going to do is Let's create a circle. We'll uh, something like that might work. Let's make it a little bit smaller. That just seems a little outrageous. And then um, we'll create something with the snout as well. And we'll make that run red. Okay, so let's go ahead and select all of this. Uh, let's select the main. Let's select. Uh, shoot. Let's select everything first and take the stroke and make it black. Okay. And now let's take the body, make it gray. Select that in part of the. Um, antlers, subtract it, as well as the eye, subtract it, and this looks a little goofy so let's go ahead and fix that. Let's uh, remove the fill, yeah let's go ahead and hmm, let's go ahead and extend this line over here uh, just to make it separate the two back legs a little bit. And we'll just bring it all the way over to here. So let's set that here. And then we'll bring this here. You can kind of see how I like working in red. It just makes seeing some of these lines just that much easier. And I think that might all be all we need. I think that's probably good enough. We could just delete our picture. Let's go ahead and select that. I'm going to combine everything. So object or path, I'm sorry, to combine. And now everything's all one piece. And I don't want him looking that way. I want him looking the other way. So let's go ahead and flip that. There we go. And now we could take our clock insert. And we could probably put it, let's put it right there. Let's go ahead and enlarge the elk a little bit. Boy, you know, something like that I think will work really nice. 
So let's go ahead and move this over just a tish and let's go ahead and start combining some of these. So let's go ahead and combine the elk and the syrup. Let's go ahead and duplicate everything first before we start getting carried away because if we don't like it, this way we have a backup copy. And who knows, maybe later on you might want this elk uh, for another pattern. And this way it's already drawn and you don't have to uh, reinvent the wheel. So let's go ahead and select those. Control plus. Oh, it's not liking that because this is a group. So we'll ungroup that. And then ungroup that. Yep. Okay. What we'll do instead is we'll combine them. So come up here to path, combine, and that allows us to uh, union these. So I'm going to come up to path, union. Nope, I didn't like that at all. So I'm going to kind of take both of these and combine them, path, union. Okay, so what I, th I think I'm going to do, I think the reason why this isn't uh, combining is probably because it's too complicated. So I'm going to break this thing apart so that it's uh, uh, two pieces and then let's try this. There we go. Now it's combined. Uh, and then I'm going to select the outside and this new object. I'm going to hit control plus and that combines that. We're going to take the, I bet if we select everything here and click combine. Uh, so path combine. Um, hmm. It kind of uh, created these uh, unusual shapes. So let's go ahead and undo that. Select both of these. Uh, control minus select that antler and then this control minus and then I think everything else will remove that stroke remove fill I mean yeah there we go now we're getting somewhere down here you can see that the little leg kinda pop through we don't want that so let's go ahead and start editing our deal here so I'm going to delete both of these and select that. Okay, that looks good. Uh, this area here, we want to bring those together. So let's go ahead and we'll just create a little square here path, object to path. In fact, I'm not even sure if we, I bet we could probably even just do this. Select them both, control plus. Eh, didn't do a real good job, so let's undo that. Okay, now control plus. That looks a little bit better. We can go in here and delete that node. Come in here, delete a couple of these nodes. Yeah, see that looks real nice. So basically that's what we have. We have ourselves a brand new pattern. Uh, make sure you go ahead and sign it. So I'm gonna, uh, let's give some instruction here. Let's say uh, this is uh, cut from three fourths fourth inch stock and we'll make sure we label it as the base oops and center that up and then uh, we'll just put it over here and then this part we'll label uh, Cut from three fourths inch stock, three quarter or half inch. And 
Let's go ahead and, um, and we'll place this right here, I think. Okay. So let's go ahead and group this together. Let's group everything in here together. And then make sure you sign your work. Elk clock uh, pattern. And center that and make sure you always sign your work group that we'll take both of these let's go ahead and just center them up just so they look nice well, not like that but just so they look nice and there you have it now you have a uh, miniature wooden clock uh, just by using the tools that we've learned in this class. So I hope you found this informative. It did run a little long and I apologize for that, but um, you know, the tracing does take time and um, uh, it, but it certainly is well worth the effort. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this entire classroom series. Uh, I'll, I'll continue doing these um, podcasts on how to use these programs to create scroll saw patterns. Uh, if there's something specifically you'd like to request a demonstration on, uh, just shoot me an email over at scrollsawgoodies at gmail.com and I'd be more than happy to put together one of these videos. This wraps up our classroom series on how to use Inkscape to create scroll saw patterns. I hope you enjoyed the series and learned a few things along the way. You can find all the lessons over at scrollsawvillage.com in the Village University Forum. There you'll find videos, written instruction, downloadable source material, and of course, classroom discussion where you could have all your questions answered. Be sure to check out our other classes too, including how to use the free program GIMP to create scroll saw portrait patterns. Very popular series, hope to see you there. If you enjoyed this series, consider dropping a couple coins in our hat. Contributions help maintain the websites and help us continue to bring great content such as this. You can find a PayPal donation link over at squirrelsawgoodies.com. But if that isn't your style, you could click on our Amazon.com affiliate link. Any purchases made through this link, we get a little bit of a kickback. We don't know who bought what, so no worries there. So next time you're thinking of an Amazon shopping, think of us and click our link first. Does it cost you any extra and you're helping to support the show? And one last note, we'll also be making this entire series available on DVD. Don't worry, you'll still be able to download the entire class for free, but some folks prefer to learn in the comfort of their own living room. The DVD set will be made available in the next week or two, so keep an eye out for that. Anyway, I hope you all had fun. I know I certainly did, and I can't wait to see what you come up with. So, until next time, happy scrolling.